What is a pre-approval and what does the pre-approval process actually look like? Well, that's what we're talking about today, so stick around. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. Every week I post videos about what it's like to live and work here and guidance on buying, selling, and investing in the area. If this sounds like you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and don't forget to hit the bell so that you're notified of the new videos I release every Monday. In this week's video, we sat down with your local mortgage expert, Mike Aldi, again, to discuss all the different aspects of the pre-approval. We discuss why is a pre-approval important? why it should be the first step in your process, what documents do you need when getting pre-approved, and can you actually shop around from lender to lender without it affecting your credit? Before we get into all the nitty and gritty of the pre-approval process with Mike, I wanted to just give you the quick definition of what a pre-approval is. A pre-approval is when a buyer has submitted all of their financial information to the lender. The lenders reviewed it and determined whether or not this particular buyer could be eligible for a mortgage loan. They're also going to review what type of loan product would be best for that buyer and discuss with the buyer their budget. To actually get pre-approved, the lender is going to pull your credit. They're going to vet all of your documents that prove your income, which are either bank statements, pay stubs, or your income tax returns. They're going to discuss with you what funds you have for both the down payment and closing costs. And they're going to discuss your budget goals with you. Now, some lenders will actually take all of this information instead of just looking at it themselves, they'll actually send it through an automated underwriting process just for an extra level of approval for all of your information. The lenders that do this really provide you with a strong pre-approval letter when you're out shopping in the market. Now let's sit down with Mike and see what he has to say. You know, Mike, when I first meet with a buyer, the first thing I tell them to do if they haven't already done so is to meet with a lender or meet with a mortgage broker first. Would you agree? Absolutely. hundred percent. It's, I, I can't tell you how many times I've spoken, you know, with a client who might already be under contract or is out there shopping for a home and have, they haven't even thought about their budget or what they might qualify for. Uh, so it's it's a huge part of the process and absolutely I tell everybody uh, this is the first step before you even open the door to leave the house. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, I've, I've done the same thing. I've, I've worked with a lot of buyers that come to me and they say, oh, no problem. I got no problem getting approved for that. And they've never really talked to anybody. And then we go out and we start looking at houses and the worst thing that can happen is they fall in love with this house that they actually can't qualify for or are or afford and then every other house that I show them just really doesn't ever live up to that standard and we don't want to you know have that happen I've also had on the flip side where we were searching really too low mm -hmm. um, and they were getting disappointed and we couldn't find what their dream house was and then once they started talking to the lender and getting pre-approved they learned they actually could qualify and afford a lot more um, and it was still within their monthly budget so that's our goal right to find that sweet spot with with what they can qualify for versus what their budget goal is for the month is, is to figure right. out we need to know what that number is right Ab absolutely and that's that's always my I'll say maybe my second or third question as we're going through you know the initial conversation to figure out where we're heading um, you know it's what is the comfort level on a monthly mortgage payment are you paying rent now what is that rent how much more can you afford or mm -hmm. you know kind of where to your point where is the sweet spot mm -hmm. um, and that's all part of the pre-approval process in determining that. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, a client might tell me, oh, you know, I'm looking in the $400,000 range, mm -hmm. but they don't want their payment over two grand a month. Mm -hmm. Well, you shouldn't be that. looking in the four, <laughs> in a $400,000 range. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a popular price point here in central New Jersey. But yes, right. I've definitely had that happen. So, you know, when I sit down with a client, I, you know, obviously the first part of the process is, is pulling the credit. Everybody's afraid of pulling the credit, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's as I like to say, a necessary evil. Mm -hmm. If you want to be truly pre-approved, if you want to be 100% ready mm -hmm. to get out there, and even if your timetable, if you tell me it's six months down the road, and I know you're going out to look at houses next weekend, I bet you the chances are pretty good you're going to find a house. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to be ready. Yes. So let's get it done. Mm -hmm. A credit report is typically good for at least 90 days. Mm -hmm. We're not going to continue to repo credit. Mm -hmm. right? It's it's not just the credit score mm -hmm. that we're looking at. There could be things out there on a report you might not even be aware of. Mm -hmm. Collections, you know, liens, mm -hmm. um, you know, judgments, things like that. Um, 
you know, any, any number of things could pop up on a report that might be from, you know, three, four, five years ago. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things out there that could impact not only, you know, just qualifying in general, mm -hmm. but certainly your affordability, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we want to look at. Then we're going to talk about, you know, your job. What do you do? Are you, do you own a business mm -hmm. or are you a W-2 wage earner? Mm -hmm. um, how long are you in that business mm -hmm. uh, or working for that particular company? One of the things that comes up a lot is, you know, oh, I also have this part-time job, mm -hmm. right? Part-time income is, is nice. It's good to have. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that particular part-time income for at least two years, mm -hmm. I can't use it. Oh, that's right. interesting. Because yeah, side hustles, or the term side hustle, is very popular right now, especially among millennials, which is the biggest um, group of home buyers coming onto the market right now. Mm -hmm. um, so that's interesting to know that they need to have that side hustle, part-time job, um, for at least two years before it can count um, towards your qualification. I didn't know that. That's correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and not only part-time income, but if your comp plan is based on, you know, say a base salary with commission and or bonus, mm -hmm. if you're not in that job for at least two years, we can't use the commission or the bonus. Oh, interesting. Okay. Only the base salary. Okay. Right? So those are things that you want to you think about. And this is all the stuff that you discussed during the initial consultation with them, right? The, the initial steps to the pre-approval process. Absolutely. What documents do they need to bring with them, if anything, to this consultation or to this meeting with you? Great question. Um, so if you're just, you know, a, a W-2 wage earner, uh, you've been with a company for X amount of years, what have you. Uh, normally, we're just going to look at the last two years of your W-2s. Mm -hmm. um, I'll look at the most recent month of pay stubs mm -hmm. uh, and the most recent two months of bank statements. Okay. All pages, mm -hmm. even the blank one in the back. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you own Good your own know. business, right, exactly. Because <laughs> the underwriters always ask for it. Mm -hmm. um, if you are, if you own your own business, then we're going to be looking at your tax returns mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's really only for the for the, the business owner, the self employed uh, individual that mm -hmm. we're going to you know kind of dig into those tax returns mm -hmm. as well. Um, for those for that type of client, if we can't qualify them, mm -hmm. um, you know, based on you know where they're netting out uh, after all the expenses, what have you. Um, we can look at a bank statement program for mm -hmm. them, maybe a 12-month or a 24-month bank statement program. Mm -hmm. and look at those deposits and see nine times out of ten, we're going to get more income out of that to mm -hmm. be able to use for them to help them qualify. Right, because a lot of self-employed um, individuals, they take a lot of tax deductions, right? Absolutely. So it actually shows at the end um, they may not have made as much money as they, they may have based on the different tax deductions that they're able to take legally. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comment section below. If you know anybody that can benefit from the information we're discussing here today, please share the video with them. So Mike, I have a question for you. Sure. I get asked this by a lot of my buyers that say, I want to shop around for my pre-approval to see who has the best rates and fees, but I'm really worried about dinging my credit. And we talked a little bit about earlier and you said that there was a 90 day window, correct? There, the credit reports are typically good for at least 90 days. Okay. Um, but to expand on that, if the consumer is shopping, and the consumer has a right, you know, to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So there's typically a 30-day window mm -hmm. where multiple lenders can pull credit, mm -hmm. and you're only impacted by the first pull. Mm -hmm. What I will typically do is basically give them the important information of the credit report. Mm -hmm. Give them the qualifying FICO score. Mm -hmm. And here's the monthly debt number that we're looking at. Now, mm -hmm. you know, we're not looking at the total amount of debt. I'm looking at what the, the minimum monthly liabilities are okay. on the credit report. And I'll give them that. And if they have that information, the lender doesn't really need to repull credit. Mm -hmm. Right? You can say, all right, here's my information. What can you give me? Yeah. So that, you'll pull that, that from them and then they can go and use that information to shop around if they're worried about pulling their credit. Right. Why don't you share with everybody um, how they can get in touch with you if they'd like to. Sure. Um, you can go to my website, which is homeloansbymikealdi.com, or you can reach me on my cell, which is 732-890-7838. And I'll make sure to include all of his contact information in the description box below, so you can go um, ahead there if you want to click right into his website. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. As always, thank you for your continued support. You know, I really enjoy making these videos for you every week. My goal is to make the content you're looking for, so if you have a suggestion for a future video topic, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I'll see you next week. Cute intro music. In this week's video. <laughs> Wait, we gotta play it again. We might have to start that all over again. No way. <laughs>